Get ready to quit the build. The QTB crew is rounding up all the gaming news and hot topics of the week with a little extra something. And here are your hosts, Bruno, Brad, and Nick. What it do? You're listening to the QTB podcast. I'm your host, Bruno. With me are the boys of QTB, the Brothers McMuffins. We got Nick and Brad. Woo! Finally. We're here. All, All three, three of us. Back they together. said it couldn't be done, Brad. <laughs> you know, I mean, we, it, you know, it's just the wheel of, uh, the wheel of uh, QTB sickness, right? Wow. So, right? Uh, yeah. Good, good to be back. I apologize, you know, a two week hiatus for your boy over here, but uh, he's back stronger than ever, you know, a little, uh, Little family sickness kept it kept your boy out for a couple weeks, but I'm back. Yeah. I'm ready. Well, I'm ready for a Nintendo heavy discussion today. I'm excited. I'm ready to yeah. get some some dialogue, some devil's bradvocate going back in the in the podcast. I feel yeah. like I'm 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 energized. I'm ready to bring it. So you guys better be ready. I'm I'm, ready. I'm glad that you have that bradvocate ready to go because I'm gonna sim for Nintendo so hard you don't even understand. <laughs> I'm ready to gush over this news story. Um, but yeah, no, and don't feel bad, Brad, because uh, heaven knows that we we've all all three of us have had uh, our turns with uh, with the stuff over the last couple uh, weeks and months. And all of our viewers as well. Hope you've been uh, happy and healthy. And uh, if not, hydrate often, get some rest, take care of yourself. Yes, yeah, very important. Definitely. We talk about mental health a lot, but uh, heaven knows physical health is uh, is just as important in many aspects. So. Yeah, on uh, on today's episode, we'll be talking later about the uh, the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. That's an actual game um, that was uh, initially released as an April <laughs> Fool's joke, and uh, I think the, the, the it's fans an actual game. <laughs> the fans may have the last laugh as it is one of the most popular and highly rated games <clears throat> currently on Steam. And also, we'll be talking about um, our big story for the day, which is the announcement of Nintendo Live. But first, as we always, uh, as we do. We got to go around the horn here and uh, talk about what we've been uh, what we've been playing. Bruno, have you uh, have you wrapped up your uh, Breath of the Wild journey there in time for the release of the sequel? Uh, n- no, not yet. I'm I'm getting through the uh, Champions Ballad right now. So I went through the went with the D- DLC, obviously, yeah. and there is a Champions Ballad that you can essentially play. I mean, right now I'm at the end game anyway. The only thing left for me to do in Breath of the Wild is defeat Ganon. And everyone knows once you defeat him, it reverts back to that state before you did beat him. So there is no yeah. end game content past him. I'm already there in that respect. So I'm doing some of the down or the DLC content, you know, just beefing myself up. And then literally, uh, you know, right before the game comes out, I'm just going to head on over to Ganon and open up a can of whoop 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 all up on it. you some was Captain that, Sano? I'm surprised I didn't have a sound effect for that. We should make that a sound effect. That was... I should, I should make, I'm gonna... It was intense. I, I will send you to Jesus. <laughs> that is what's gonna happen, okay? Can, can we, can we, can we get some water boy clippage in here? Can we get a little Captain Insano in here? <laughs> Captain Insano. Ca- Captain Insano shows no mercy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's great. No, I'm super yeah. excited for that. You know, uh, Breath of the Wild has just been... I mean, there's a reason why... Every you know, essentially Nintendo is is copying and pasting uh, the game and just adding on to it. I know everyone that's the consternation, and we'll get into that as to whether or not you know that's proper game development. But you know, nobody bats an eye at Madden not changing every year, other than a roster. So why are we doing that for for uh, Tears of the Kingdom? I'm excited for it. Mm. Nick, what have you been up to? You know, I again, the live streams have just been a ton of fun. So we we had a little bit of a change up in our uh, live stream schedule. I've been trying experimenting with 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 ways communities, the, the community can interact with my games. And one fun thing that I did was a Super Mario Maker 2 stream. Um, it was so much fun. We're going to be making it a regular thing because we had viewers. Uh, I, I told him about this a week in advance. I'm like, hey, if you guys want to make any levels or recommend any levels, let me know. I will play them. Sure enough, one of our fans created a whole QTB level, um, That's crazy. a QTB themed level that I got to play through. First of all, it was ridiculously difficult. Okay, uh, I, I appreciate Nabbit the the amount of work that you put into trolling me, 
Um, there were troll <laughs> endings. It was extremely difficult. And I had to dust off my uh, my platformer chops. But after like almost an hour and a half, I got through it. But it was great. Like there was like secret secret entrances with like with like Q logos um, out of coins and uh, oh, a Poyo that. that you had a Poyo obstacle you have to get past at the end. But lots of references. Um, it was a ton of fun. The Detroit Lions came in and gave me a level I couldn't Shout beat. Shout out Detroit Lions. I couldn't what? beat their level. I mean, they stumped me. I know. Yeah. They got me. That's incredible. <laughs> I'm going to play it again. I'm going to beat it. <laughs> so help <laughs> there, me. There's no, they came in strong. Once they joined yeah. the stream, they have been strong every time they've been in the stream. All right. It's, hey, got to be You're going to become a Lions there. fan at least on Thanksgiving, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> at least <laughs> at least doing Thanksgiving wow oh, I'm man. just saying man I caught yeah. Nick I caught your streams both mm-hmm. with the with the platformer I caught it with Super Smash and no one could take down the Detroit Lions the Detroit Lions were just hold and serve I mean 15 so. and 0 in our Smash stream we're going again on Thursday um, and if they show up again man like they're the team to beat like we got all these all these people coming in they're like oh man I can't wait the, to be the, the, the first Larry one to take down play. The Larry. I mean, right? Come on. I'm Superior here. I, I don't know why there isn't a Detroit Lions uh, esports team right now. Okay? Just the social media guy could be the Call team. Call us up. We're going to yeah. sponsor by Quit the Build. The Detroit Lions probably don't need our sponsorship because they have way more money than we do. But hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, dream big, baby. Dream yep, big. Yep. We'll, cha- we'll change our colors. We'll they do it. Can yep. be, they can be Iron Man. We can be your blue. friendly neighborhood. Quit the build Spider-Man, okay? I, I'm okay with that. <laughs> build it. us a suit. I, I, I'm, I'm up for it. I'm ready. I love it. But no, that's mostly been my my week. Uh, just uh, keeping up with those streams has been a ton of fun. And uh, yeah, we should have another fun week ahead of us here with uh, what we got coming up. So what about you, Brad? What's uh, What's been happening there in the in the gaming space? Well, for us, when we felt energized enough and are not sleeping or recovering, uh, my wife and I have been playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. We have been working our way through. She's working with me for the first time to beat the game. So we're working through each of the tiers and working through 50cc, 100cc, 150, mirror, Mm -hmm. and 200, and trying to just complete the entire game. So this is her first, uh, what I'd call, like, full playthrough of a game. Usually she just kind of lightly play stuff but we have been committed to work as a team to uh to beat this game from start to finish every every cup with the new dlc content and achieve not only three stars but get the gold trophies and complete this game start to finish so we have been been playing switch quite a bit and and it's been quite fun actually so um unlocking and she's really getting into now like oh i can actually customize my vehicle and understand like speed oh, yeah. versus acceleration and and traction and all of that so uh Wait she, got she gets into those head- hidden stats i'm gonna start uh-huh. sending her those hidden mini turbo stats that's what she needs tell them about okay. the wiggler bruno tell them about I'm the wiggler tell you about the wiggler the wiggler <laughs> had to move aside though to the teddy buggy the teddy, the teddy bear right the now. It's all ones. about the teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, the bitty buggy is what I use. <laughs> the bitty buggy's the biggie buggy's nice too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Roller we gotta, wheels. We have to get a whole QTB fam Mario Kart night because with my yeah. wife, Brad's wife, and then you know Nick on the horn. Obviously, Nick's wife would would join the party. Oh yeah, but she is she is so dedicated to her work that she cannot possibly take a break to whoop our butts. Obviously yeah. we know she would win. I know Handily. she's, she is a baby. She is a baby Daisy for sure. She is like, <laughs> she is, uh, <laughs> she is out there on the, the bitty buggy, just cruising around best acceleration. I feel that for her. Wrecking fools. That's right. <laughs> and, and what really made this fun was what we're actually, our son, our son's getting into Mario now. So, Oh, that's I awesome. found a I found a Hot Wheels car that is Mario's cart that he oh, that's like great. When, the default cart that he yeah. rides in in the game unless you change. I found a Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels made uh, made that into a Hot Wheel, and so I found that and I showed it to him. And then we've been playing Mario Kart, so he's been really getting into not only watching it but also we started playing super on the like with the you know Switch Online extended uh, you know back backwards compatibility. I've been picking up the old 2D Mario and showing him and playing through the original game. So um, we're definitely on a Mario kick in this house. And 
But it's a good segue because we're going to be talking about Nintendo Live here in a little bit. And so, you know, we're definitely we're immersing ourselves. The family's becoming immersed in the Mario culture and lore and perfect time because we want to go see the movie, too. So if oh, you've yeah. seen it, no spoilers. We haven't been yet. But uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely getting into the Mario, the Mario fandom over here. Awesome. Well, I mean, hey, nothing like the classics. Um, and even that, you know, some people, you, you might, you might want to go for the newer games or the classic games, whatever it may be. I'll tell you one place where you can get it all before we get into our big story, and that's with our friends over at cdkeys.com. Guys, I got to tell you, the deals are coming fast and furious, and if you haven't already gone to cdkeys.com, you're missing out on potentially some amazing daily deals because they have special deals that pop up once per day. Um, and if you if you miss them, they're gone. Right now, they've got No Man's Sky Frontiers, the complete edition of No Man's Sky for 18 bucks on Steam. That is 63% off of list price, and that's just one option. They've got 33% off on their daily uh, deals right now for a three month Game Pass Ultimate Xbox or PC code. This is the stuff I'm talking about, where it's it's the kind of content that anybody can uh, can appreciate. If you're an Xbox, PC, PlayStation, even Nintendo deals pop up there in there every now and then. So check it out if you're going to buy a game. Check out CDKeys.com first. See if you can get a better deal. And even new games like The Last of Us Part 1 or pre-orders for upcoming games like Jedi Survivor. You can get those keys at discount before the game has even come out. Good luck beating that one, GameStop. Check them out today. Um, <laughs> no power up rewards card membership required. Um, nope. Make sure to use the link but in you our get show notes. Former, Nick. Well, is that? Yeah, that's still a thing, actually. Is it? I can can oh. confirm. Yeah, no, no, it's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it's truly, truly a holdout. Uh, but thanks over, as always, to our friends over at uh, CDKeys.com. We love a value and we love video games. My gosh, it's a perfect partnership. All right. Yeah, well, I, I just picked yeah. up. I just picked up three more months of Game Pass, and I got a discounted deal. I can't complain. Yes. So I mean, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it. Why not? You're it's you're saving money. Save yourself some dollars. Go support and you play the games you want to play. Yeah. I mean, yeah! win 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 win. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> everybody wins. Um. Awesome stuff. And uh, yeah, guys, our big story for today. This is really exciting stuff. So, you know, we had just talked about the cancellation of E3 and, you know, that was a shock to no one. Um, and if you didn't already, I highly recommend checking out the last episode where we just kind of go into the the victory lap of us being like, you know, yeah, it wasn't even a Bruno Stradamus moment. Like we all no. we all knew we it all was knew. happening from a mile yeah. away. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, the dominoes fell and eventually everybody th- uh, backed out and said they wouldn't be there. And they're just like, yeah, guys, it's just not going to work. Um, so, you know, uh, it's, it's just so interesting that on the heels of that announcement, this story comes out. And this is from the Nintendo official website, Nintendo.com, announcing Nintendo Live 2023 in Seattle, an event uh, for everybody that celebrates Nintendo fun. It says the in-person experience um, uh, after initially debuting in Japan, is actually coming to the States. Um, this is going to be a new way to experience the games and worlds of Nintendo. They're going to have gameplay, live stage performances, tournaments, photo ops, Ooh. and with uh, with uh, Nintendo characters and more. So essentially what they're, they're alluding to here is kind of what you would see at E3, but it's all Nintendo stuff top to bottom with their schedule, their games. And I have to say, like, yeah! You might hear that when you walk in the front entrance. You know, you're gonna you're gonna get hyped up. You know, I, resort time. I, I'm, I'm ready. Oh. I'm ready. So, fun fact: I, it, <laughs> Mr. Grove says that it's an M3, uh, as did Russell. Um, but what, what's crazy about this is, you know, um, I, somebody had posted recently a screen cap of the last time that there was a. Uh, an, I don't know if it was E3 or not, but it was something similar. When, uh, yeah, I think it was when uh, uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons was being announced. That was back in 2019. So there would have been an E3 that year. And they had their own little area. I wouldn't even call it a booth. It was like a whole like section set up where you actually walk across the water at the electro, like the, the screen that was water. And you go into this big island area of that looks like the island from Animal Crossing with the music playing. It, yeah, money, big bucks. And, you know, Bruno, you had talked about that on the last episode. <laughs> Um, about how much money it costs to go into these yeah. things. But with the success of Nintendo World, and especially with the Mario movie, now the uh, top grossing animated film of all time, surpassing Frozen 2, I think I think Nintendo's got a couple bucks to throw around, don't they? Oh, 100%. I mean, this is, this is a very, very awesome marketing play for them because with uh, essentially 
uh, Nint- uh, Super Nintendo World opening on the West Coast. Uh, what is that? It's, it's soon, right? It should, I think it's coming up within the next couple of years. I believe so. Uh, yeah. It's going to be opening up. It's already on uh, it, on the East Coast in Orlando, and and it's going to be opening up in in uh, Southern California as well. This is a great chance to give West Coasters a, a little taste of what super super mario world could is and and can be and i i think this is a great play for them and like i said before with all of the money that they spend spent on e3 they can do their own things now that probably end up being half the price because not only are they able to you know essentially pick a new venue they're not they're not shoved into the venue that is E3, right? They're able that's why Xbox essentially went off and, and got that theater a couple years ago, right before E3 shut down. You know, they they needed more space. They wanted to not have to pay the premium price of what it probably costs to rent out space for E3, right? Think about that. Like, think about all the marketing dollars that go into something like E3. It is absolutely Absolutely ridiculous to assume that that trend could continue um and then on top of that having to pay a premium venue price for you know a spot in uh the convention center in la right like brad you gotta know that i mean anytime you want to go to something something in california you know just as well as i do it's expensive and it's expensive to rent out space. And so, you know, this is this is a win for Nintendo in that respect. They don't have to do the marketing work and they get to kind of dictate their own event, so to speak. Oh, yeah, I fully agree. I think I think it's the perfect storm for Nintendo, right? E3's demise is Nintendo's gain completely because they're on the rise both from not only just a success standpoint with their gaming platform but with just the the rise in popularity in a larger demographic especially in the u.s with the success of the movie and it being only a few months away you know well, half a year away for this nintendo live event and like you said bruno to be able to build and have your own space your own creative freedom and your own ability to develop like you you know your own worlds within that space to have Mario you know and have Animal Crossing have all these different areas where you're going to have live performances photo ops game reveals gameplay development you know um you know tournaments where you're going to be watching people be competitive there's something for everyone it's going to be family based it's going to be gamer based it's going to be and so I really think this is it's a natural evolution of what is coming out of E3's demise. It's like Nintendo's the rising phoenix. And I think this really could be very, very successful for them and to where they'll do this again and again versus participating in any joint gaming convention. They're just going to be like, no, come to Nintendo Live. You're going to see it all here. And, and I think you're going to see that folks are going to gravitate towards this type of a thing where they, they're going to go... 150%. Everything they're going to do is going to be maxed out to the fullest extent, and it's going to be an incredible experience because I think we can all agree when Nintendo does something, it, it, it it's quality. There's it's not They're not going to shortchange anything. They're not going to cut corners. So I, I really think this could be a great, not only gamer experience, but family experience. Like, why not take the family, go meet some of your favorite characters, have a photo op, see some gameplay and and enjoy yourself like yeah it sounds great for everyone so <laughs> I, I mean i i it's in seattle it's not that far away from me i'm yep. i'm heavily considering going not oh, yeah. as just a a podcaster but as a fan so oh, yeah. yeah this is a three-hour trip for me so i'm like oh yeah, this is definitely doable this is uh <laughs> i've been meaning to visit seattle so Road here trip. we go <laughs> here we go yeah that sounds like a lot of fun um yeah i mean you know yeah, great points there brad and bruno you know I, it's just it's, it's really exciting you know i think we need these in-person experiences to get hyped about about gaming and that's what this is right whereas e3 was all about game reveals and and promoting your brand, uh, you know, alongside other brands. This is like you said, Bruno, this is their chance to really, really control the narrative. I wouldn't be surprised here if we got a major game release at one of these events. They said they've done it before in Japan. I'm going to have to look, look into that more about like what that looks like, if, you know, actually visually and like what the format is. 
I'd love to see something like it because, you know, it, it honestly, what what better place to be like, hey, here's a huge drop, you know, stealth drop for Miyamoto to reveal the next uh, Mario game. And, and think about their demographic. We've talked about this many times on the podcast. Nintendo has been very strategic about maintaining a wider, but I would say younger focused demographic than maybe, you know, Sony and Microsoft to create an event where you can embellish that and create experiences for kids of all ages that only continues their passion for being a gamer beyond you know 5 10 15 20 whatever your age is that it's going to be such a, a widespread diverse event that there's it's it i think it's just going to increase the overall success and visibility and um, passion for Nintendo and a, and a larger audience here in the US so it's a brilliant move to bring that concept from Japan over here where you have an uh, evolving, growing uh, consumer base and let them just chew and maturate on on the, the amount of content that Nintendo puts out and has in their backlog. I mean, Mario, Zelda, yeah. Animal Crossing. I mean, we could go on for oh, hours definitely. about just every every world that you could get immersed into that they're going to be able to have live characters, photo ops, games. I mean, geez, I mean, it, it's going to be... And that's their bigger and like plan, you said, right? Nick, right. I mean, they're just yeah, gonna. It's this is a stepping stone to something oh, yeah. bigger. Totally. I yes, mean, this exactly. is you know we're definitely going to we're they're definitely going to expand on Super Mario, you know, Land or World, whatever they're calling Super Mario World, and mm -hmm. and and you know have a a high rule. I mean, that is going that is their their Cinderella's castle, right? That is their Disney castle is the High Rule castle or maybe. Maybe Peach's Castle, you could say, you know, that. But honestly, I think that with the with what they're doing, they can easily go down that route. And they've seen it, right? They've seen the success of Harry Potter World. They've seen this, the success of Disney's Galaxy Edge, right? Or Star Wars yeah. Galaxy Edge, right? From, from, from mm -hmm. those two perspectives. So obviously, you know, it, it, from the looks of Super, Super Mario World, from what I've seen, it does look very, you know, interesting, but it's not something that I would, you know, it, it feels like maybe a one day trip. Yeah. And I think that they want to expand that to, to a multiple day trip for people by bringing in those other, other experiences. And this is a great way, like you said, to test the waters, to test the waters when finally bringing some, some game tournaments sanctioned by Nintendo, because Lord knows they love to throw the ban hammer down on all those poor smash tournaments, you oh, know, yeah. from the GameCube days, right? Like mm -hmm. people are still trying to have smash tournaments on the GameCube and they're, they're shutting them down. So I think that this is a natural thing for Nintendo to move towards because how, how, why, right? Why shut down all these tournaments and then not have your own sanctioned one that you can, you can do. And so I think that mm -hmm. this is something that they couldn't do before with E3, right, Brad? It's, it's, it's going to become like a three day event, like a, a it's an extended weekend event where you have yeah. day, during the day, you have the more family oriented events and character meet and greets, photo ops, you know, uh, live, you know, the different parts of the, of the arena where the worlds are, you can explore and play. And then in the evenings or afternoons, you have tournaments. Then maybe you have a panel, like Nick said, where creators come and discuss what they've done. Maybe you have a, a console reveal. Maybe you have a special event that's unknown, and maybe that's where they reveal the new console or a new game. And it, it basically becomes the best of everything that they've participated in in different platforms and different arenas before. Now you mm -hmm. cultivate your own and you have a, 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 a an extended time to basically create it's a it's a it's a, a base palette to make your own and paint your own picture. So I mean so, I think I, yeah. I'm I'm really anxious to see how this first one goes to see and what what they learn and then how they're going to again evolve that going down the line. So Nick, a lot of people are talking about what the reveals could be, right? You've you've speculated maybe it's a new game reveal. Uh, Brad mentioned a new console. You know, I'm not sure if we're we're at the stage yet where we're going to get a new console from Nintendo. I don't think that that's necessarily the path they're going down. But I think maybe a game game release could could be on the horizon. What, in your opinion, would be? uh you know the the cherry on top of this uh nintendo sunday 
you know, to kind of, uh, you know, get people excited about Nintendo Switch instead of considering why don't we have the Switch Pro, right? Bruno, I'm so glad you asked. It has nothing to do with a console <laughs> release or even a video game release, Bruno, because this is how we get back three magical words. The Nintendo World Championships, baby. Let's go, okay? Oh! I want I want over-the-top production value. I want it live-streamed. I want at least 10 fog machines, okay? We're bringing the wizard back, all right? We're bringing it back in a big way here. I that's love how this. That, Nick's that's quietly initially... plugging that he wants to be a host of that, right? too. He yeah, wants oh, to yes, be a I call, do. commentator. Yes. I am do we ready. not see that right here? <laughs> I'm, yes. I'm ready. I'm standing by. I would, I so, would rock it. So obviously, yeah. uh, that is how that is how they initially uh, announced Super Mario Brothers three. Yeah. You know, it was was the the tournament they you know kids had never played it before. You know, and if you've not seen how um, Kevin Arnold from uh, the Wonder Years helped his little autistic yeah. brother beat everybody and become the wizard. Okay, then you need to check out the 1980s movie, The Wizard, with Fred Savage and um, that kid with the power yeah. glove. Yeah, he's running for right. uh, running for uh, for uh, government now. Fred no, Savage. that's Ben Ben Savage. That was the other Savage. Ben, yes, sorry, yeah, I got my Savage. Corey, I got my Savage. Corey from from Boy Meets World is running for oh, running for okay. politics. That's why he's not on. That's why not he's not on that other podcast. So right, 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 right. Yeah, that that other one. Um, okay, but no, I mean, like, stuff like that would be fun. You know, I, I, you know, who knows what Nintendo's, you can't, that, if there's one thing that you can, I can say with confidence about Nintendo, you cannot predict their next move. As, as formulaic as they appear to be with their games, you never know when it's going to happen or what they're going to do in between, right? Because we, remember, I, I always go back to the, the, the height of the VR craze. Everybody was, was hyped about VR. People were coming out with their own variations. Even Google was doing Daydream where you could, like, get a janky cardboard you know, a VR set and put your phone on it. Um, and, but no, Nintendo said, uh, how about we make stuff out of cardboard? Just, just make <laughs> stuff out of cardboard. And then yep. they made uh, Nintendo Labo or whatever it was that was yep. like cut out like, like cardboard stuff, like, like a piano and robots and stuff. Like they, they do their own thing and they do it unapologetically. You know, I've always had a lot of respect for the fact that you look at like things like the Amiibo, right? Mm -hmm. The toys to life craze has gone. Like it, it, it showed up in a big way. Skylanders was doing it. There were a bunch of other copycats. Lego Infinity um, was doing it. And then Dis all of a Disney sudden, Infinity. Disney and Disney Infinity and Lego had their own too. I forget what, yeah, the, what yeah. the name of it was. Yeah. Oh um, no. Dimensions yeah. They or did, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's um, what it was. Dimensions. Yeah. Yeah. And it all came crashing down. And to the, to, to this day, you know, they still release new figures, even though the margins are slim. Like you're, you're, you're paying very close to, if you actually look at the quality of those figures, um, plus the NFC functionality, like I promise you, they're not making much margins off these things, um, but they still make them. They sell them in low quantities. They sell out and people are happy with them. You know, they're they're for all of the weird business practices that Nintendo has. They they are good at getting people hyped about unusual things. And so I, I think that there's going to be a lot of fun to be had here. I think it's going to be a, a can't miss event for uh, big Nintendo fans. And yeah. hopefully it, uh, it it becomes its own thing. And Something else can replace at least a partial part of the void uh, of E3. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready for this thing. There you go. All right. Well, uh, guys, you know, we have a lot more to get to here. But of course, before we get into that, I tell you, if I had to fly all the way out to Seattle, my gosh, I would I have a little bit of jet lag, you know, uh, hop in three different time zones. You know what would help uh, put a little more pep in my step? A little something called advanced GG. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, guys. Uh, we have, as, as always, we are brought to you by Advanced GG. We love working with these guys. And, guys, listen, they offer powders, supplements, shakers. Bruno just showed you one. Um, and, of course, they got the canned drinks. And they are the only clinically proven uh, beverage, um, or really even mixture, that helps improve mental performance when gaming. There's science behind this stuff, guys. And if you're looking to improve your gut health as well, uh, check out their new probiotic drink blends. It's got all the energy of Advanced GG with probiotics for your gut health. All right. Right? No chalky aftertaste. None of that gross stuff. Fun flavors. You're going to have a great time. I'm on like my seventh can of this stuff. I'm going nuts for the Advanced DG. Um, so check them out today. <laughs> what was that face? Was that the face you make after you're, you've got all that energy? Yeah. <laughs> let's let's slap that on a bottle. The, the what it brew. What it brew berry. <laughs> okay, write that down. Write that down. 
Uh, but yeah, check them out, guys. Make sure you use promo code QTB10 when checking out at Advanced GG. Save 10% wow. off of your order. <laughs> what did Brewberry? I can Sometimes tell it's been things... a couple weeks. Oh! <laughs> telling you. You step that away is... for one week and it all changes. That is gold. Absolute gold. It is. Well, I'll tell you what else is absolute gold is the, the game we're talking about in our next story. This is coming from Kotaku.com. Yes, a Kotaku story, but it is a good one. Talking about uh, <laughs> Sega's surprise April Fool's joke that uh, is now one of the most beloved games in the franchise. It's called uh, The Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. This game has been downloaded over a million times. And well, I mean, yeah. You, you got to hit the record scratch on that one because he gets <laughs> he gets he gets off. OK, so it's averaging an 87 on Metacritic. Are you kidding me? Like, you know, how you know where most like Sonic games land on Metacritic. It's not. This is like literally one of the best reviewed Sonic games of all time. Um, so, yeah, they they initially released this the day before April Fool's um, for free um, on Mac and PC via Steam that uh, in, literally involves Sonic getting getting killed. Um, in this murder mystery where, yeah, it happens. And so the whole, the whole <laughs> game revolves around you. It's, it's kind of like a, a whodunit style thing of just kind of interviewing people and uncovering the clues and trying to figure out who caused this. It's not a long game, um, by any stretch of the imagination, not that you would imagine it to be, but you know, it, it's, it's got overwhelmingly positive reviews like, uh, Brad had alluded oh, there too. And uh, they've confirmed that it's been downloaded over a million times. People are praising the, the fun direction it's taking Sonic in and, you know, it's interesting because you look at, like, big mascots, um, Sonic, Mario. Okay, we'll start there. Um, that they've gone in just about every direction you can think of. You know, even oh, yeah. Mario has had a turn-based RPG, like the Mario, yep. Paper Mario games, even Mario RPG for the SNES. Even Sonic the Hedgehog has had a turn-based RPG. It was a DS game. I think it's called Sonic mm. the Dark Brotherhood or something to that effect. So, you know, these types of spinoffs are not that unheard of. Um, no. you know, Bruno, you, you're a huge Halo fan. Um, you know, even though Halo Infinite, that should be a mainline game is, is really struggling to, to establish dominance. I mean, we've had some good spinoffs, like what, with the arcade game we've had, even had Halo Wars, right? And RTS, two of them. Yeah. And actually, uh, I would, I would say probably one of my favorite, um, uh, spinoffs of the Halo franchise is Halo Spartan Assault. And it was a, a, a top down shooter that that you got to basically kind of control and move around and a little bit more, uh, um, arcadey than like halo wars, right? It wasn't that like real time strategy. It was more like just a top down kind of arcade game with, uh, with, you know, uh, essentially Spartans running about killing, killing all the halo, you know, baddies. And, and just, it was just a lot of fun. Like it was, uh, something that you could easily pick up and play, with anyone and i think that that was a great entry into the series because it kind of bridged that gap that skill gap that halo has right like there's a huge skill gap when playing uh any first person shooter and when you can kind of get the controls back to really basic things you know where you're just essentially moving the right stick to to shoot and aim like that's essentially what you were doing the left stick moved you the right stick aimed it was kind of like a geometry wars type game yeah. which by the way you know, uh, amazing shout out there. Low key shout out to geometry wars, but, um, uh, you know, Nick, I, I think that there have been a lot of, of spinoff games, right. And in speaking of first person shooters, you know, the most recent one I can think of is, is apex legends, you yeah. know, you mm -hmm. know, Brad, as somebody who's played both, you've played Titanfall and Apex Legends, you know, think about that that journey of, of essentially spinning off and creating an entirely new game that may or may not have deserved to, to be in the Titanfall universe because there were no Titans. But yet there we are. Like, <laughs> we've got it, right? Yeah. Yeah, oh, you're right. 100%. I mean, I think, you know, you're looking at this and... uh sometimes the spontaneity of the creativity of finding a new way to kind of reimagine, I would say more, <clears throat> uh, longer living content or longer living characters, that kind of characters, that new way of kind of that new lens, that new perspective breathes a little bit of life, not just into the character, but into, into the gamer base. And, and I think, you know, you, you raised some good examples there with Titanfall and then the apex legends, 
that felt so fresh. That felt so different and so new. And then you even saw competitor games start to mimic or copy some of the uh, unique aspects of that game into their own. And so being able to see now something like for Sonic be reimagined in such a way that became so popular so fast, I, I think that just shows you that you know fans are still uh, chomping at the bit for these characters to be invo- involved in games. But sometimes it just takes a little bit of thinking outside the box to bring bring it back to life. I mean, to Nick's point, I mean, I think there's been... I mean, there's been like a dozen or so of Sonic games over the last few decades, and for this one to be near the top with such a massive number of entries in in, in the Sonic title, um, it's pretty interesting to see, uh, you know, how this can all of a sudden just virally take off, and 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 it seems like it's a good marketing technique. We we talked about this with you know Apex Legends before, just bringing a new game out of nowhere with no marketing buildup, no expectations, mm-hmm. seems to have success because you just let the game speak for itself. So you know here, here's another instance where that happened. It was released just kind of unexpectedly, and all of a sudden now it's 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 catching like wildfire. Yeah, you know, it's funny, Bruno, you uh, and uh, to those of you that are not currently in the live stream, Bruno linked to a Game Rant article of video game spinoffs that are better than the main franchise. I, I landed on the same on the same Web page while, while Brad was talking but on, on my own Google search. And, you know, it's and yeah, sure enough, yeah, Apex Legends is on this list um, and it's it's subjective. Right. But I mean, there are some and yet you, you don't think about it until you realize after the fact a great example of this is Family Matters uh, on the mm. TV side. Not a lot of people realize that Family Matters was a spinoff of a different successful sitcom um, where Harriet, the the wife of the of uh, of uh, of the household, um, was a uh, elevator doorman, basically. Yep. In that show. And so she got her own spinoff that then, you know, obviously just just became this whole new thing. Um, And so, you know, but you don't really think of it as a spinoff, even though technically it was. And I think of games like um, Forza Horizon, right? Where. You yep. know, Forza Motorsport was already very established as a as a as a great racing game, but very simmy, you know, very on the on the sim side. And yep. so for them to say, hey, let's take what well, uh, let's take Forza, move it more into the arcade style space of racing while still, you know, giving you the cars, giving you the yeah, experience. Same engine. Yeah. Same, essentially, it's essentially yeah. it's the same same physics engine that you've got in there, maybe a little bit dumbed down, mm-hmm. you know, but the, it's the same. You can still tune your cars and everything. And you're right. You know, Horizon is a its own beast now and and it's really a breath of fresh air in between the you know the the standard you know motorsport games and i mean if if you're looking at that article that we we've got referenced there by game rant of uh video game spinoffs better than the main franchise obviously the number one on there is is super mario brothers right you know starting out as donkey kong moving over there so i think that these types of games, right? You know, and I look back at, at the history of like all the things that Pokemon has done, right? Think about how many different Pokemon games there are. Pokemon Go, uh, you know, uh, Pokemon yeah. Stadium, Pokemon Snap, you know, some that that just completely flipped the script and 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 didn't give you that RPG style of uh, you know adventure game. They just were, you know, here's something new. I think that when you've got a good franchise with strong characters, like Brad said, you know, it's interesting to see them in different scenarios. And I think it's about time that Sonic made that leap because they've done it with TV shows, right? They've, 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 they've cornered that market in terms of like, in comparison to super Mario, right? There aren't a handful of, there's a, there's a, you know, a couple super Mario brothers shows. There's, (laughs) You know, but for the most part, right, like you've got a lot of different Sonic iterations and so many different games that you can really come out with when you're not trying to, you know, make another Mario Kart, right? Yeah. Like, or or make another Smash game. Like, you know, like we don't need that. We need something that's, you know, low key and fun and, and just uses the characters and isn't afraid to, to make, make fun of itself. And what perfect day to come out then, then April 1st, right? People couldn't tell if it was a joke. <laughs> They're like, I got to see this for myself, right? Like, <laughs> it's been done before. Um, you know, I, I think of, because there've been some great, like April fool's jokes end up being amazing. I like, I, I know KFC did that dating sim game. Um, where you can date Colonel Sanders and like, it's a whole, it's a whole thing 
Like, you know, gaming companies are no stranger to really fun April Fool's jokes. I think of like Blizzard that always did amazing April Fool's oh, jokes yeah. or like World of Warcraft with like joke classes or abilities or, or patch notes that weren't real. Um, but to actually get it in the googly form of like eyes. a play, of course, the <laughs> googly <laughs> eyes are always, always <laughs> a classic. Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if we saw Sonic in like a restaurant rush game because he's fast? So the whole point is he's serving and grabbing the food and delivering it. Fa- like, I mean, there's like, that would be really I know cool, that like an overcooked cheesy, but like, type of game. Yeah, yeah, but with Sonic, right? Because yeah. he, the yeah. whole point is he's fast, right? So, mm-hmm. but the, your points, you're 100 percent right, Bruno. I mean, the point, like, it, it, it's it's finding ways. Once these characters have kind of broken the fourth wall per se they've been used in movies i mean we've seen sonic make cameos several times in a plethora of movies in very different ways too of how they've depicted sonic some (laughs) that have met very very hard (laughs) critiques from 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 the community (laughs) but but that more or less i mean it allows you now that flexibility you know once that kind of uh, ex- expiration has on the initial frame of the character then why not take some liberty and 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 represent them in a, in a new a new imagining and, and it brings some freshness to a, a, a legendary iconic character which i think sonic took like fourth in our bracket style debate i think back a few weeks ago so yeah yeah he got beat know. up there at some point you know even i threw him <laughs> i threw him and Mega Man under the bus like way sooner than anybody thought i would so you really did nick i'm just saying so Highly entertaining but, but, stuff. But this yeah. is this is what's be- this is the beautiful thing about the gaming industry and the gaming community is that these titles can come out and it can be something that's just kind of grassroots development brought out as an April Fool's joke and then it just catches its virality that gives it a whole new life way more than I think anyone was intending it to and it's positive and it's great and people are loving it and people are playing it and that's what's important. What I love most about Sega and what I think Nint- I wish Nintendo could take notes on. You know, Bruno, you were talking earlier in the pre-show about about Nintendo going after the emulators that Steam Deck is putting up, and Steam is—I think they, the, the Dolphin emulator got into some legal uh, hot water yeah. there that emulates the GameCube. And you know, it, it's it. What what I love about Sega is they are so supportive of fans that create games that they allow it to happen. And the result of that, as long as you don't monetize it, as long as you don't sell it for money, they are totally cool with you putting these games out. The result of that has been some of the best Sonic games. That I've ever played very early on yep. while streaming for QTB. I, I dived into some of these games, which uh, uh, Sonic Robo Blast 2, which is made in the Doom engine, is one of the best 3D Sonic games I've ever played. Um, the uh, was a Sonic and the Fallen Star is yep. a love letter to 2D Sonic. I mean, that the list goes on and on. Even the even the app, right? Like the, the guy who developed the uh, current mobile version of Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog 2 like that was a fan project that they essentially were like, yeah. you know what? Why why even let's just license it from him. Let's just grab it from him. We'll pay him and and yeah. I'm pretty sure they did, right? Like they paid him for it. They're like, here you go. <laughs> Had to make more. Um yeah. which is how we got the Sonic CD mobile versions and that's how we ultimately got Sonic Mania was that his team yeah. um and the team that he was uh, of the studios he eventually found at Christian Whitehead um went on to make and the result of that is one of the best uh, uh, arguably the best 2D Sonic game, um, the official Sonic game that's been made. Um, wow. So yeah, you know, when you embrace your fans, it's amazing what happens. But I just love that, you know, even though this was not made by fans, to my knowledge, um, they are very tongue in cheek. Like their social media account, the people running it are great. Like they, 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 they're posting memes, they're posting jokes, they're having a blast with the the wacky side of Sonic. And uh, for them to embrace this, and for the fans to embrace it in turn, I think it's very healthy for for the fan base. It's just fun to see this kind of stuff. But Nintendo, you know, you get you get the exact opposite. You know, one one person releases something. I remember there was that that hype when the guy released that um, that high resolution Mario 64 that was like playable in a browser. And there was even like multiplayer support. And, you know, the the the, the takedown free, but the takedown came like that. So many Pokemon mods just you can't well, you can't get any traction. Here's the here's the thing, right? Like. At this stage, I, I would say if there was a Switch emulator that was circulating online and the Steam Deck was not a thing, they wouldn't care as much. They'd still care because Nintendo doesn't ever like like you know let anything you know you know fly under the radar in, in terms of you know uh, stealing any money from them. Right, they're very, very protective of their brand and and their IPs. But 
the Steam Deck is essentially a a better Switch. You know, it's a four hundred dollar portable PC that plays Steam games. Now, not all of them run, you know, perfectly, right? Like there's some hiccups and stuff like that. But if you're giving them, you know, uh, something like a Switch emulator, the Steam Deck is going to cut through that like a hot knife through butter, baby, because it's got better processing power. It ha- It is a better handheld, you know, hardware than the Switch is, right? Like, you know, despite the what what the Switch has in terms of mobility and coming out, Five years ago, you know what it is now. Like obviously, Nintendo Nintendo needs to make that 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 jump to to essentially become more powerful. We're reaching the end, and we can clearly see that in the way that they're producing, um, you know, some of their games. But you know, at the end of the day, the Steam Deck is a huge competitor to Nintendo switch. And that's why they're so adamant about that. And Sonic on the other hand is struggling to stay relevant in, in the space of, you know, where it's finding its identity. And they've tried multiple shows that didn't quite work out. And they finally landed on a movie series that is actually really, you know, pretty decent, right? Like it's giving us hope in these video game movies. And I think if it weren't for the success of Sonic, then Nintendo wouldn't have been so adamant about going forth with the super Mario brothers. So, you know, as, as, you know, as the, I would say the little, the litter, the little cooler brother of, of Mario is, you know, his pet Sonic, right? Like that is, always going to drive the competition the competition of Nintendo whether you know they're directly competing with him or not you know they've always competed against him as a franchise i think they kind of won you know right when they brought him into smash they kind of were like you know now we've got sonic so we've squashed that bug but you know I would say that that Nintendo is still trying to make sure that they position Mario in that same light as Sonic, where they've got yeah. different IPs for him. And so it's just great to see a Sonic win, I, I, I think, you know, because the, the, the fan base is more than passionate. We found oh, out yeah. from the Game Awards, right, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> we, they made that Frontiers happen. Um, and to be fair, I played through some of it. It's a, it's a very interesting game, but uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say game of the year worthy uh, at this point in time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is, uh, man. You know, I, I do love a good spinoff, though. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite spinoffs of all time is got to be QTB Nights. OK, oh! it's all the fun of QTB, but in a, in, a, in, a, in a fun nighttime. It's always nighttime when we record, but whatever. It's QTB Nights. Guys, you can get access to QTB Nights, our bonus podcast, plus extended episodes of our current uh, podcast, um, and a whole lot more, including exclusive merch you can't get anywhere else over at uh, patreon.com slash quit the bill. Thank you so much to our Q- QTV in Fuego supporters, Epic Capture Productions, Matt.bat, Caitlin, Court, Nene, Megan, Ashley, Andrea, Cassandra K, and our newest QTV in Fuego supporter, Lisa A. Thank you so much for joining the family and our QTV Plus supporters. That's Nick Nick, the Dudist Monk, Indie Gamiax, Alan Abadessa, Mr. Grove Games, the Intergalactic Pinecone, Fluffy Bunny, Terry the Kitten, Maddie, and uh, hey, maybe your name can be on that list, and I'll finally run out of breath. I'm getting very close. I'm getting very close. He did it. <laughs> he said he did it. <laughs> um, it's it's getting borderline, okay? Uh, you know, like five crazy. Five more names. If you want to be the name that makes me finally have to inhale in the middle of that, um, you can join us at uh, at patreon.com slash quit the build tier start as low as oh, two dollars. I love that. I we you know? need to push that. Like that's who's right. gonna break Nick's <laughs> Nick's run here on on saying that in one breath. That's fun. That's fun. <laughs> it's it's very competitive. Someone's gonna come out with come that. On, you know, everybody, that. you know you wanna do it. Welcome yep. to our newest five dollar supporter, Smitty Werben Jaegerman Jensen. <laughs> Werben Jaegerman, he yeah. was number one. He was number one. It's true. He was number uh, one. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can get Arnold Schwarzenegger to to join the the Patreon and see if he can uh, add his name as well. That's right. Or 
George Stavanodonopoulos, I guess, and and Zach Galvanakis, and oh, that's a good one. <laughs> one. Yeah, as many <laughs> syllables as possible. All the names. Check it out, All and uh, yeah, while you're while you're at it, guys, make sure you head to our website with thebuild.com. It's your one stop shop for all things QTB. Make sure you check out our blog, guys. Our blog is just as in fuego as Patreon because we have so Boom, many articles coming through right now from our amazing friends over at Podcasters United. Um, and I got to tell you guys, we're talking about some passionate gamers, indie podcasters from uh, all different walks of life who are making amazing content, and it's coming at you. Fast and Furious, we had a new game review um, from an indie game that just came out called Pirates Outlaws from James, as well as origin stories of many of the writers. And uh, we got some great uh, kind of listicle style, uh, style articles coming up of their top 10 games and consoles. A lot of top 10s coming up uh, in the month of May, so be on the lookout for that and more content. Uh, pretty much every other day, at least, we're updating that with a new article, so check it out. Quit the build.